Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we are gonna be doing a setup and review of this Piopoli Phenom Prime. I am loving this printer. And if you're interested in picking up your own Piopoli Phenom Prime, use the coupon code below to get $200 off the cost of the printer. Piopoli Phenom Prime is a big boy. It comes in at 18 by 14 by 30 inches and 100 pounds. Now it's got all metal construction, the protective plexi door, and a newly designed cooling system to keep everything, well, nice and cool. Now it uses a standard build plate and a heavy duty Z axis, which it definitely needs for prints that size. And how big are those prints? Well, the build plate is 11 by 6 by 15.78 inches. So that's a pretty big plate. And the printer comes with a monochrome 5.5K HD screen that's 5,448 pixels by 3,064. So you're going to get a lot of detail in these prints. And now we're going to get rid of the level. So we tighten down the build plate and we loosen the four screws on the side. These are going to make it so that the build plate uh, sort of wobbles. And it, when it hits the bottom, when it gets home, it will set itself as level. We might have to do a few things, but we're going to know in a few minutes. So you can see it's moving around. Now we lower the build plate. We send it home using the LCD screen. And once it is in the proper placement, we try to slide our paper underneath it. Now, Piopoli recommends doing it this way. Don't put the paper down first. Try to get the paper in after. Now, you can see it's not going in really at all, so mine is pretty much leveled. But if there was play, you would move the build plate down 1.1 millimeter until that paper can't get in there. Then you'd go ahead and set the Z-axis so that you've got a new home. Always do it that way, and you will have awesome prints. Look at the size of this vat. It is huge. Now, I love their system where you just slide it in. It butts against the, um, the back of the machine. You tighten these screws down and you're ready to go. Now again, I'm using Ceratech resin. It's my favorite when I'm using a Piopoli machine and rapidly becoming my favorite overall. And you can see it just takes this entire jug no problem. Uh, I think you could fit up to two jugs in it the uh, USB is in the back. I wish it was in the side, but it's okay. It's in the back. Standard print screen. We find the model, and this is actually going to be the top of the grabber mask. So you can see this is a pretty big print space that I can fit, you know, this top half of the mask because it's pretty large and I actually bumped my STL up, uh, I think about 5%. And it was able to print it, as you can see, no problem. And I got to tell you, this thing came out amazing. I mean, even though there's texture on the model, there is no layer lines. I mean, they it is just so crazy smooth. I was so impressed with it and just the level of detail. And I mean, after I do some sanding and some filling just for where supports are, I virtually have to do nothing to this. Really, really happy. Now let's take a look at a couple more prints. This is a John Wick, and look at the detail in the beard, in the hair, the texture on the clothing. Same thing with Black Panther here. Crisp lines, smooth, and the helmet. Look at this. I mean, I don't have to do any sanding. It is just, it's incredibly smooth, incredibly detailed. I mean, I have no layer lines. So, so impressed with this. And this is, of course, the Sierra Tech smoke that I'm using. But this is what killed me. Look at the buckles on this Batman who laughs. Those things are not big. They are very thin. And they came out with absolutely no problem. And look at the detail in the leather work and in the teeth. I tell you, I am really digging the quality of this printer. Now, I've run about seven or eight bottles, maybe even nine bottles of resin through this printer, all Sierra Tech. Uh, I've been printing a lot with this Sierra Tech Smoke. I really like it, Smoke Gray. Uh, when I'm printing with a Piopoli machine, I only use Sierra Tech. Um, that's what they use when they're testing their machines. And it's got like a low viscosity, so it isn't heavy. It, it really prints really, really well with these machines. Uh, and I'm starting to use it with everything. Now, again, it's a large machine, but that 5.5 screen, that 5.5 resolution is incredible. Uh, if I take one of the guns off and I take a look at this thing, 
it has just got detail for days in the hands and the gloves. And this is on a large printer. Um, I'm gonna have to do virtually nothing but a little bit of primer on these models and then start painting. And that's what I look for when I'm using a resin printer because I paint everything and put some LEDs in it and whatnot. So I need that detail. Again, with this little, um, this little dial here, the knurling on it is perfect. I'm gonna hit this with some paint, uh, some primer, and I'm done. So the bits of trade-offs you get is yes, uh, a printer this size is a little bit pricey, a little bit more pricey than something that a regular, some like a new person's gonna be doing. But if you're getting into printing more and more and you're using it as a side business uh, and you're printing things that you're selling on Etsy or you're uh, printing things just for yourself or you've got a small shop, the size prints you can get out of here are fantastic. I mean, if we look at this thumper, um, this whole piece right here was printed this piece, the uh, head area here, the spear, and the tip on that is scarily sharp. I really, really need to sand that thing down. Um, these all fit on the bed as well as uh, Black Panther here and a couple other little things. So you can fit a lot of stuff on this bed. Now, what are some of the drawbacks of this machine? What are some of the things that I'd want uh, to fix? Let's look at drawbacks first. And I guess this technically isn't really a drawback. When you are printing with a large printer, whether it's an FDM printer or a resin printer, the thing you've got to make sure you're doing is leveling, leveling that plate well. A lot of times people say, oh, it's my setting, it's my settings. Sometimes it's settings. These prints were all made with the factory settings. I loaded Cheetah Box on my machine, it's already there. But I loaded the, the profile that was in it started printing, had a little bit of an issue, realized uh, I just hadn't leveled it properly. Uh, I did it really quickly for the video and I think, oh wait, I don't know if I really leveled it. Mm -hmm. So I uh, leveled it uh, properly and boom, fantastic prints ever since. But you have to keep that leveling process up. Now, Piopoli recommends leveling this way, like we showed in the video, lowering, then sliding the paper in. And if you need to, if the paper goes in, lower it like a 0.1 millimeter until the paper doesn't go in, move around. Then reset your Z to make sure that you have locked in that new home and then print. And it's gonna work fantastically. Again, I've had one failed print and that was because I didn't level it properly. Now, if there's one thing I would change on the machine, it would be to add handles to the build plate. Um, the L has it. Of course, it's a bigger build plate. Uh, the Jupiter has it. Um, and I think a few other ones, you know, bigger printers have them. Uh, but this one doesn't. I think they were thinking it's just small enough where you might not need a build plate or uh, handles. But when you unscrew that, you've got to hold on to the build plate or the head of the build plate and I find it a little bit awkward. I'd rather have some handles on it. Uh, it obviously doesn't take away from the quality of the prints, but um, it would make it a little bit easier to use. That's it. That is it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked looking at some of these prints. Uh, again, the links to the prints will be below. All the prints here you can get from uh, my website, 3dprinterprops.com, except for this cool John Wick one. Links will be below where you can pick this guy up. I cannot wait to paint him. But uh, yeah, there you go. Now I'm gonna bring this back over behind the fake wall and I'm gonna start doing a bunch more prints that I'm working on for a really, really large project I'm really excited about. So there you go, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please click like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. All right, take it easy.